Hello everyone, this is Sean Hargreaves and today I'm going to go over um, some of the tools that I use in Photoshop for my illustrative and um, uh, concept design work um, and um, I think it will be uh, a good tutorial to get some of you started and to give you a, a pretty good overview of uh, some of these tools. When you're starting out in, in Photoshop, especially uh, when you've just bought the software, sometimes you'll open up a, a new image and um, that's it, you don't have anything else. Um, you don't have the two most important uh, windows, which are which is the tool window and the layer window. Um, so to, to get these onto your screen, you go up here to Window, pull down, Layers, and there's your layer window. Back up to Window, pull down to Tools right here, and there's your Tool window. You can have these together a little magnetic, just kind of connect there. Um, I like to move them around. So this is your, um, you know, your Tool palette, your Tool window. Um, and this is your layer window. Um, I have another tutorial uh, on layers which you can look at. Um, so we won't talk about that too much today. But let's just bang through these tools. So here on the upper left we have the marquee tool. If you click on it, it'll go a darker grey. And the marquee tool is a square selection tool where you can make it any shape you want in the square linearly in the square mode here and you can move it around once you've got the kind of square you want um, if you hold the shift key down and pull across it'll be a one by one square if I don't hold the shift key down you see I can do rectangles but if you want it to be an accurate square hold, hold the shift key down okay so that's the marquee tool um, one other thing is if you want to uh, when you when you're making your marquee tool uh, your, your, your selection here and you're holding the shift key down for example if you also hold down the spacebar, you can move it around. It's not needed so much when you're doing a square, um, but certainly, let's go back up here on the upper left. If we go into our elliptical marquee tool, same deal. It's uh, ellip ellipses, but you hold the shift key down, you've got a perfect circle. Um, if you hold the spacebar down, you can move it move it around. This is um, this spacebar moving thing is is really good if you don't have your size and you're just kind of trying to make a selection like this head, for example, and you just kind of okay, maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller, and just keep adjusting and moving it around, hitting the spacebar. It's really really helpful. So that's um, elliptical marquee tool. Um, the single row marquee tool I don't ever use, um, so I won't talk about that. Um, and I will not talk about the single column marquee tool. So we'll move beyond those. The two I use here are the rectangle and the elliptical marquee tool. Um, so let's go to the next one over, which is the move tool. Move tool exactly is exactly what it says. It it moves things around. Now you see how my image here is snapping. It's, it's like it's snap, snapping is like it's magnetized. It it'll just kind of suck right into the edge there, and that's under view. Pull down to snap. So it's always uh, it's, it's always a good thing to, to have when you're doing uh, when you're dealing with accuracy. 
Um, so this is the move tool. Now if we go back up here to um, the rectangular marquee tool and we select it, for example, then we go to the move tool and then we can move this bit around. Okay. Um, you have to hold, you have to move from within. So like I just showed you, if, if you if you move from the outside, the whole image is going to move. So if you want to move just this area that you've chosen, you have to move from within the, the selection. Okay. So that's the move tool. Let's go to the, this is the lasso tool. Lasso tool. And this is another selection tool. The marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool and these others, are, they're all selection tools. And this is also a selection tool, lasso tool. It's a freehand selection tool, basically. So if I wanted to, for example, go into this robot here and I'm just kind of freehanding this around just her head. Right? And then I want to move this head around, you know. Um, that's what the lasso tool, tool does. It's quick and dirty, and um, you know, you, you if you're in a hurry, it's it's it, it's good. You know, you don't have to mess about with it. Um, underneath that, you got the polygonal lasso tool, which is basically a um, the semi free hand because it's um, it's a linear selection tool. You can this is great for selecting buildings. Um, you know something like curves. You have to really hit a lot of points. Um, but it's great for, you know, for example, square. Move that around, do whatever you want with it. So that is the that is the polygonal lasso tool. Lasso tool. Um, next one is the magic wand tool. Um, what the magic wand tool does is it basically it, it'll 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 select things within a certain color range. So right here we've got a tolerance at 32. If I select this highlight, it's selected a variance of this color. Okay, deselect that. If I go down to 10. I hit the same spot. It's a more concentrated um, choice of the color. Um, if I go up to 80 and I choose this, it gets gigantic. It's covering a wide range, um, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty handy, I have to say. Um, I always start down at the default, which I believe is 32, and um, choose from there. You know, um, but it's 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 a pretty handy when you're in a when you're when you're in a hurry and you don't want to use the polygonal or the lasso tool to select stuff out. Um, let's see 20 here. I just want to select that area and get rid of it, or change the change the color to, you know, red. For some strange reason. Um, I always use these pull down windows because I'm just I'm left handed and everything's programmed the other way, and I just I've just gotten used to pulling these things down. Everyone's like, why don't you use hotkeys? I do. I use hotkeys for a program a few, but not. Uh, I'm just used to it. Um, 
and also it's great for when, when I do a tutorial um, and I'm pulling this stuff down it's good for viewers to know that okay I don't know where the hotkey is but at least I can follow him with the, the windows so there is some positivity to that um, so that was the um, magic wand tool I don't use a quick selection tool so we'll bypass that um, now we'll go here to let's move back now we'll go here to the crop tool now as soon as I hit this crop tool, this is the crop tool right here you'll see these handles on the corners and in the middle I usually carry the, uh, I usually uh, hold the middle one but you're cropping right now the darker grey on the right hand side of where I'm pulling here is going to be cropped out so you can kind of get a visual of uh, where you're going to be and then up here you've got um, the no which is a circle with a, a line across and the yes which is a, a check or a tick so if you hit yes there you go you just uh, cropped it all right that's the crop tool what else we got in here I don't miss about with any of these others so I'm not even going to talk about those um, eyedropper super important uh, the eyedropper tool is, uh, if you look here where this red is, the eyedropper tool is basically choosing the color. So if I click down on that. The red was the color that was already in the palette there, and the eye drop, uh, the green at the top of this um, ring is the color I've just chosen. And as, I, as I move across the body of the vehicle, you'll see it changes. So say I want this kind of green here lift up, there is in my palette. Um, maybe I don't like the green after I've seen it there. You know, you just click on the palette there. Mm, I don't. Um, maybe I don't like it. You go over here, and again, you see where you were. A slightly different green. Maybe you like that better. Remember, the bottom is the green you chose prior, and the, the top is a new one. And there you have it. So the eyedropper tool is, is great. Um, um, it's another great time saver when you when you when you're working away. What else have we got in here? Um, don't use any of those others. So now we're going to go over here to the healing brush tool. I I never actually use this. I'm going to have a go right now. You basically you hold the option key down, so you see the target, and if I wanted to get rid of this little nodule intake outlet thing, um, then you just paint over that, and it 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 kind of kind of figures it out, you know. But you have to do a little bit of work, but it's pretty great. I mean, this kind of stuff we're doing gradation is a nightmare with cloning and and this kind of work. But um, it gets you in the in the area before you start having to hand paint stuff. So that's the healing brush tool. I'm not going to touch any of the others. Let's go over to the brush tool. Brush tool is uh, very common um, in what I do. Um, if you Okay, here's here's um, some hockeys. The brackets um, and the Mac are on the right hand side of the P. I'm on a Mac. Left is smaller. Right bracket is larger. And you can see here on the upper left the size. Now, if you click here on the upper left, it'll bring up your tools, and you can go through here and. Um, Look at what tools you want. Um, this is some kind of chalk, chalk brush. Um, 
yeah, this is sorry, this is your your, your brushes, not your tools. Um, different brushes. You can download brushes from the from the web, or you know, just use the preset brushes um, that they provide in Photoshop. Um, here, this little nod, this little button right here, you click that, and this is how you can program your brushes. You've got brush tip shape, shape dynamics. Um, you can you can see on the bottom here what it's what it how it manipulates it. Minimum diameter, angle jitter. There's there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. Uh, that can that can really you know help you when you start painting. Um, programming brushes is uh, is another. Uh, tutorial I have so please check that out on my YouTube channel or Vimeo channel um, we'll close this or you, you can close this with this cross here just go back up to here and just click that and it's gone so, um, here's your opacity for your tool for your brush let's go back up to um, the default hard brush so this is like a hard brush right here boom hard edge Airbrush, soft. Come on, Z. Gets rid of it. Step one, step back. Um, opacity is right here. You build it up. Let's go back to the hard brush again. You build it up. Let's get back. I'm gonna go back here and do all this stuff on here. So you can see you can you can just like build it up. Um, with a, an opacity set at low and the flow, you can bring the flow down as well. A little bit more control. It's a little bit more feathery on the edges when you bring the load when the, when you bring the flow down. So that's your brush tool. Um, I'm not going to go into the modes, the modes right here because that's uh, another another tutorial. We're just going to do the the the, the semi-basic tools right now. So this is the brush tool, pencil tool. Don't really use that very much. Um, it's I just I just use the brush and make it really small. <laughs> I never use the pencil tool. That's a pencil tool. Um, the other two color replacement tool, mixer brush tool. Um, people start using the mixer brush tool. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, can't use a good example here for that. So brush tool, pencil tool. Let's move down here to the clone tool. Clone stamp tool. Um, this is a great tool. Uh, I always use this here on the airbrush mode as opposed to the hard edge. But for example, let's zoom in here. Um, the whole thing about the clone tool is where you're cloning from and where you're cloning to. Um, so, see this dark area here, say I don't particularly like that dark area and I want to make it smooth, say, well, I kind of like this area here, well, how do I put, put that to there? Well, you can use the clone tool and you hold the option key down and just click on this area here and then move over here oops sorry I'm on the wrong layer here we go here we go and you can just clone that out um, it's at 53 percent right now um, you want this line to come across, and just hit it on the line here, and then 
it'll give you a cheat sheet, a little cheat um, image here where you can see how it's looking. Um, but the clone tool is is fantastic for um, getting rid of spots and debris or dots, things that you don't particularly want. So it's option, clone tool option, hold it down, and your opacity is right here. Same thing, opacity and flow, similar to the brush, right? In fact, it is a brush, it's just like a cloning brush. 